Now to the topic we have at hand, which is the maintenance of weaponry in Nigeria. Because the NAF air crash that happened, there were speculations that, first of all, they said it was an aircraft. We also even had uh, someone saying that they actually saw someone coming out of the aircraft and then villagers around the area went to rescue. But then when NAF released the statement, what they said was it was a drone. That is an unmanned um, air vehicle that crashed and not uh, aircraft containing someone. So we are talking about the recent NAF air crash that occurred at the beginning of this past week. And now to my uh, guest here in the studio. Our former guest was saying that we should not necessarily blame the happenstance on, um, on lack of maintenance of the weapon or the gadgets that we have in Nigeria because it's technology and then you know it is subject to error at any time. Do you also share that sentiment or do you feel that in Nigeria perhaps we have issue with maintenance? I will defy a little. The first thing is um, it's a good thing that nobody actually died at least from the report that is what it says and then secondly it will also be a sad reality that this we keep having this recurrence of uh, different um, equipment being damaged at one point in time or the other. I think last year it was about 100 persons dying, about drone and all that. But that's a sad reality, but it's good. They, 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 what citizens are looking at is the incompetence of an institution that should by now be specialized in using this equipment. If trillions of Naira budgetary allocations are being given to you yearly, and simple equipment like this you cannot manage, you cannot e even source for maybe persons with expertise to actually build capacity of these persons, then what are you using those monies for? So for me, it's, it's, it's timely for an audit. I, don't, I have not heard of any time that military budget, budget at the audit at, at any time. I think this is a call for it. Maybe the money is meant for this, uh, my repairs of this equipment or getting new equipment that are useful at this particular uh, time, point in time, 21st century. Maybe they don't have it. And maybe the money is instead uh, become private property, not for the good of the people. So there should be an audit to determine what have they been using the money for. If it's expert is the lack or the equipment, then maybe it will come to a time where private persons now have, should be consulted to be able to be, get those equipment or even man it. Just like the police act permits the police to recruit specialists to assist, they too can do the same to avoid this constant reoccurrence and people scared of dying instead of seeing help when they see maybe uh, a military officer or equipment coming close to them. Okay. In this year, we've recorded quite a number of plane crashes around the world, not in Nigeria now, but around the world. We have quite the record of plane crashes that is recorded. So it makes one wonder, is this nature trying to show us that you have not really succeeded in conquering, or this is just something that all countries around the world have to pay attention to the maintenance and because times are changing we also have to factor in issues of climate change and some of the things that are happening now that there's possibility that it might be affecting some of the equipment that we might be using all around the world and since nigeria we are always on the receiving part of this technologies we do not necessarily develop these things ourselves but then we buy it so what advice would you have for Let's start from all around the world and then for Nigeria when it comes to maintenance of these facilities. The, in all occurrence, occurrences generally, there is usually the political hand that most times we fail to see. A lot of times, some of these accidents are actually man-made. Why sometimes uh, due to technical issues that may occur. And a lot of these accidents, if you check, there may also be technical hands on it. If you look down and really tend to look a background check on maybe issues or those things these persons were doing period before their death and all that. And, but when it comes to Nigeria, it's a little bit departure from this scenario. This is a clear line of um, incompetence. People lacking the capacity to do what, when and how. And it has grown worse to, in a Nigerian situation, why? Because 
most times you don't really see the military actually doing what it is being founded or made in the first place to do. Most times you look at reprisal attacks. People will keep complaining. Every day you keep hearing uh, new cases of um, arrest, uh, in cases of kidnappings of people daily. You don't hear the military going to go and rescue. What you keep hearing is these persons will have to source for those monies and pay, even though the federal government is always saying nobody should pay. And if you try to do a fundraiser, they may try to trample on you. Bet. What have they shown that they have the capacity to be able to address these issues of terrorism in the country? They have not shown it. Despite the budgetary allocations, and consistently, when they even try, if a military that have failed to protect lives and they are along the line, they will go into communities, you don't know what they are there for. The police, that is their, their, their responsibility, to work in the community. And if something is above them, their power, they can now call their sister agency, the military, to intervene. But these days, you see the military walking around, going, and then you keep wondering, what are they looking for? At the end of the day, they kill citizens, and if they try to re retaliate, you keep hearing communities are being bombed by the military. Is that the responsibility of the military? So for me, I think there should be a reorientation of uh, the mentality, because there have been a lot of more than uh, killings by the military for a lot of years. No one has been held to account. The federal government, the president, at no time you see them criticizing them. When people died in 100, do you hear anybody being brought to book till date? Nobody. So it's more like the military, they are above the law. If they are not, then the federal government should actually do to show that everybody is on okay. the law. Okay, all right. And now to Abu Adam. So you were saying, before we went on the break, you were talking about the fact that we should not necessarily blame now for these technical difficulties because these are machines, their technology, they are subject to error. So I also asked the question that what could we do to ensure that we are on top of our game when it comes to maintenance of these days, since we do not necessarily make these machines, we don't make us necessarily make them in Nigeria, we are usually bringing them in. So what advice do you have for that? I, I, I won't answer that. I want us to uh, look again at uh, what my colleague in the studio is saying about the military not doing enough uh, and trying to uh, outline what really they are supposed to do. We, you and I know that uh, most of the functions of the military, as at present, I mean, their contribution to this uh, national security issue is as a result of the inability of the police force to meet up uh, with the demands uh, that the present insecurity uh, entails. And we are in this country seeing the inability of the police. A lot of people, including the present government, have been advocating for state police. Uh, because there are open spaces, unmanned spaces in this country that has given these bandits, these terrorists to operate freely, uh, be they kidnappers and so on. You know, kidnapping is just a tool of terrorism and banditry. And so we have governors and political leaders who don't want to even hear anything about it. They don't want to hear anything about it. Now, we are talking about the efficacy of the military in other nations. Is this how the military in other nations are treated, that our own military here are treated? I want us to look at it. And when we talk about the money we vote for the military, who are those that even are in control of the money they vote for the military? Is it not the same political leaders? Like he said, do we audit the military account? Even which account do you even audit in this country? The accounts that you audit, is it not the same account that trillions are being lost? Every day, corruption has taken over. This is a country that is not in, I mean, is not where it's supposed to be in all facets. So it is not about something that will come um, and blame the military as it were. And I think what we should do in this country is for us to sit up. We brought democracy from another country. It's working well there. Why can we not make it to work well in our own country? If it works well and funds are not stolen, and funds are not amassed, and they are used for what they are, I mean, they is intended for. All this idea of funds meant for technology, for training, for armament being diverted, wouldn't have even happened in the first place because it's, an, it's a great abnormality. 
for us to even be talking up. Okay, we are, you agree with me that when uh, terrorism started in this country, even our military forces were not trained in the art. They had to start training. We had to start acquiring technology. All this took, I mean, it cost us a lot of money, which we have not been able to even account for whether it's properly used or not. So the major challenge that we have is that let governance be proper. Look at what is happening in, at, in, at state levels. Look at what is happening at local government levels. All these are contributing to the insecurity of this country. Now, when you talk of even recruitment, you, I, I've said it, I think, I don't know whether it's in this uh, 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 medium, that even the terrorists, they find it easier to recruit than you recruiting, I mean, uh, committed patriots into any of the security forces of this country. Because the major cause of insecurity is on the increase on a daily basis. And no political will is being used to address it. Instead, the political leaders continue to, 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 to rule the way they like and, 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 and waste resources, I mean, to their own, to the detriment of the masses. I think we need to address this. If you are talking about technology, for instance, I, I, if I am in, uh, if I am in uh, Abuja, should be able as a security consultant, I mean, practitioner for government, even private in other nations, I should have the technology, the geolocational technology that can I should be able to see the forest between Abuja and Kaduna, and even between uh, between Jaws and Kanu, all those forests in that place. Okay, Do we right. have Not them to today? The, uh, let me let me let me, let me let me round up. Let me round up. The other time we said we were bringing some technology to Abuja, some cameras. Did they work? Did those cameras work before they packed up to today? You see them on the streets. They, be, they have become uh, they have become just uh, images on our streets. I think we need to wake up as a nation, and it's not just an institution that can take us to where we need to be. Okay, all right.